I wish I had a video like this when I was applying to university. Yes, people, it's Dennis. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about how I got accepted to study engineering at Imperial College London. This is gonna be a full breakdown of the UCAS process from start to finish, a walkthrough, so you know everything you need to know about how to get into the university of your dreams. It will comprise of information from myself, tips I gathered from Imperial lecturers, and even some secret hacks that I promise they will not teach you at your school. Now, if you're already a student, I understand this video may not be for you, but don't worry because in the coming weeks, I've got a whole host of videos that will be perfectly suited for your needs. I'm talking productivity hacks, how to boost your grades in university and sixth form. I'm talking financial tips, what you should be doing in university to accumulate your wealth and even networking tips because university and even sixth form is one of the best places to network and one of the first chances you get to grow your social bubble. This video will be comprised of seven chapters, so grab a notebook, gra grab some snacks, and let's get into it. Now, from my experience, there's three types of people in this world. There's the type of people that know exactly what they want to do. Literally, from the moment they started school, they'd be like, I wanna be a doctor, I wanna be an engineer, I wanna be a pilot, and for you, your life is set. You know exactly what A-levels to do. You know exactly what courses to do. It's all set up for you. Then you've got the second type of people that may not really have their career ambitions sorted, but they have an idea as to what course they might want to do. This might be maths because they've really enjoyed it and done really good at GCSEs, A-levels, for example. And for you lot as well, university may be a good option to explore that. Then you have the third and final type of person. This person has no clue what they want to do. They have no clue what course they want to apply for. They have no clue what job they want to go into. And honestly, there's no shame in admitting that. For the most part, I was kind of that person. I didn't really think I was going to go into engineering at any point. It just kind of happened and it kind of developed into that. And for these type of people, I'd really recommend that you research. Research what you think you will enjoy and even consider maybe not going to university. There's no for sure reason you should go to university in 2022. There's a way you can make a viable income away from university. So don't feel like just because your friends are going, you have to go as well. Really take the time to research into it and have a think about what you want to do. Now, whichever of those three people you may be, I would always recommend to research. Do not close any doors. You never know what may happen in the future and always look into something you may enjoy because university, look, it's a struggle. It's three or even four years or longer at most times. Don't do something because your parents want you to do it or because your friends are doing it. Find something you are passionate for and you don't mind studying full time for a good three to four years. Now that brings me on to secret tip one of the day and that is pick your course first and your university second. I cannot stress how important this is. I've had so many people say, oh, I really wanna get into Imperial or Oxbridge or whatever university. And although that is a great ambition, there's something called the University League Tables and it ranks the universities. And although those three universities do appear at the top of the list, they don't appear at the top of the list for every course. And at the end of the day, you're getting judged on your course you do. For example, for medicine, Swansea comes up as number one on the list and Imperial comes up in 11th. Says all you need to know really. So make sure you research your course first and then look into the best universities for that course. Don't just assume because it's an amazing university, it's gonna be an amazing university for the course you want to study. Congratulations, you have decided you want to go to university. Welcome to chapter two of this video. Which university should you apply for? It's the million dollar question, but I'm gonna break it down into five big main areas I believe you should consider when deciding what universities to apply for. The first main big factor you should consider when applying to university is the quality of university. Do you wanna to go to a Russell Group University, a Red Brick University? Now these are amazing universities and the degree you will attain at the end of it will be very prestigious. However, they've got very high requirements to get into uni and normally uh, mean you have to take some kind of entrance examination or interviews to get in. So do think about that. The second main factor is the method of teaching. Every uni is different. Some unis love to do a lot of practical teaching, like experiments. Others are very theory-based. Some have a lot of lectures, others seminars. Look at their perspectives, look at how they split up the teaching, and whichever one floats your boat, you should choose that one. Third factor is, do you like the city and the area? 
because you're going to be living there full time for three to four, maybe even five years. You should pick a place you really feel at home, whether it supports your kind of beliefs, your culture, somewhere where you can see yourself living. The fourth factor is, do you like the university vibe? I mean, some people, they want to go to university to party. Let's be honest about it. Others, they want to go, their primary thing is they just want to get their degree and study. Pick a university that matches your kind of aims that you want from university. That's the most important thing. The worst possible thing is to go to university wanting to party, party, and you go to a really nerdy university where everyone sits at home and studies and vice versa, obviously. So have a real think about what you want to get out of university. Do you value the experience more or the learning more? And the fifth and final factor is, do you want to live away from your parents? Do you want to live away from home? Because for most people, this may be the first ever time you've lived away from parents by yourself. And for me, I was so happy I did it. It was one of the best decisions I've made in my life to live away from uh, my parents for the first year of university in halls of residence. I honestly do not regret it whatsoever. I don't think you will either, but some people, they'd love to stay at home. Others, they can't wait to get out of home. That's a personal choice that you should really ask yourself. Okay, so now we've considered which universities you should apply for, let's now talk about the application process. Now, for those of you that have gone through a UK school, sixth form college, you should know about UCAS. This is literally the holy grail, every school goes through it, and that will be basically your portal to apply to these universities. Another thing to note is that if you do want to apply to medicine, veterinary, or even Oxbridge, you have an earlier deadline of the 15th of October, 2022, for this year as opposed to if you're applying to any other subject or any other universities it will be in january so on ucas you submit a multitude of things you submit your personal statement your grades and then your five preferences for university now disclaimer those preferences are not in your order on which you would want to go to them it's not that whatsoever it's just five preferences and then when you've got your offers from those unis hopefully all of them you then select a uni you want to firm meaning that's the uni you'd priority you'd want to go to and insurance and then discard the other three that's how it works i know every year someone's like oh but this uni's come up first when i wanted this uni to come up first don't worry it's just five unis you select it is not in order of preference just the five unis you have selected you will then once you get your offers be able to choose your firm and insurance and this brings me on to secret tip number two this is a big one now even if you don't want to go to oxbridge then i would recommend you still apply early and choose oxbridge as one of your choices if you believe you've got the grades that means that you can support that i'll tell you why now for me i went to a public school and the amount of teachers you have and the quality of teachers, look, it's, it's, there isn't enough to cater for every pupil. So if you apply to Oxbridge, the school puts you with the best references, the best teachers. They give you the best resources because they want to get you into Oxbridge, right? It just makes sense. Schools get judged on how many people they can get into the top, top universities. So if they see you applying to Oxbridge, they're going to put all their attention and effort into making sure you get into Oxbridge. So that's what I did. I put down Cambridge's engineering even though I kind of wanted to go to Imperial over them. And yes, that would be a good choice for some of you. If you have the time necessary to be able to submit your application three months earlier, it's also important to note that if you're doing medicine, you just have to apply early. You Oxbridge relates to Oxford and Cambridge University, and you can only apply to one of the two. You cannot apply to both, unfortunately. Chapter four relates to the personal statement. The one thing that can differentiate you from every other candidate that is applying to these universities, your one chance to show these unis why you deserve to get a space and not someone else. So let's talk about how you can ace it. An important thing is that the personal statement must be a maximum of 4,000 characters and 47 lines. Meaning if you do not adhere to both of those criteria, it will not get accepted on UCAS. Okay, so provided you adhere to both of those criteria, what should you actually put in your personal statement? Because everyone talks about this, it's such an incredibly hard thing to write, how to express why you should do a course in less than 4,000 characters. Well, the one thing I would say is stay away from just talking about your grades. They're already given to you on UCAS, the unis can see what you got in your GCSEs, what you're predicted to get in your A-levels. Don't worry about saying in your personal statement, I'm gonna get an A star in maths, physics, biology, whatever. This is your time to show why you want to study that subject. Why do unis believe they should spend their time investing in your education? So I spoke to Imperial Lecturer, the head of Geology and Natural Sciences admissions, and he said the number one thing 
he looks for in personal statements is, drum roll, passion. Passion for the subject. Why do you want to study it? And how do you show that passion? Super curricular activities. Yes, this is the holy grail of personal statements. If you have super curricular activities that boost your personal statements so high compared to other people. So what is super curricular activities though? Because I'm sure you would have heard of extracurricular activities and then just curriculum. So the curriculum is what you learn in school, your biologies, your maths, your physics. What is on the mark scheme? What is on the spec? That is your curriculum. Your extracurricular activities are things you do away from education to boost your soft skills. Something like you do rowing on the weekend, you play football on the weekend, something like that, that you can say shows your team skills. Now, super cool activity, that is where you do something to boost your education away from the curriculum. So for example, what I did in my personal statement, applying to Imperial, I said, firstly, I go to museums in my spare time. I watched a documentary on an engineer in Turkey, something like that to show you've got an interest for engineering away from the curriculum. I also wrote a project about engineering, a 4,000 word essay that I submitted to Cambridge University, something like that also shows your passion for engineering. Literally, if you have work experience, perfect. It's the best possible thing. But anything else, even something like you read a book, you read an article, you sent a project out, or you sent an essay out to something around your interest, just something to show that you take your free time and use it to apply to the course you want to study is exactly what the university is looking for. Split screen with me now, you should see one of the drafts to my personal statement that got me into Imperial College London. I couldn't find the actual one I submitted, but this was one of my latest drafts. I think it was actually draft 11 or 12. So it shows you how many times you have to write it to actually get it right. As you can see throughout the five paragraphs, I'm always talking about engineering. There's not one paragraph that doesn't mention it. Of course, I integrate my soft skills within it, but your whole theme should be around that course, around that subject. Write about the personal statement like you are so passionate and infused to study that subject. My last piece of advice would be to always seek out help, man. Like don't go at this by yourself. Don't be shy to talk to teachers, friends, anyone you may know from older years in university, maybe even potentially, because everyone can help you with this. I'm telling you, it's a subjective piece of writing. Not everyone is looking for the same thing in it. So the most amount of opinions you can get is always gonna be good. Although I do state that passion is the number one thing you should include in your personal statement. Passion fueled by super curricular activities. If you get that right, you should be able to get into university. Well, for most of you, that should be enough for your application process and I wish you the best of luck in getting into university. However, for some of the top universities and for medicine, you will have to face an entrance examination. Now, I know that sounds very daunting, but honestly, don't think of it like that. These entrance examinations are mostly aptitude tests to help you get into university and help to gauge whether the actual course would be right for you, the pace and intensity should be enough for you to deal with. Now, I myself applying to engineering uh, at Cambridge and Imperial, I faced two different examinations. The first one with Cambridge, the ENGA, E-N-G-A-A. -A. Now I'm telling you now, this test was impossible. This test was not made for you to pass whatsoever. There was honestly about 46 to 60 questions, I can't really remember. And I barely finished two thirds of the paper, if that. The timing was horrendous. The questions were really hard. I honestly don't think I got above maybe 40% in that paper. However, I must have done all right because I did pass that to get onto the interview with Cambridge. But that test honestly knocked the stuffing out of me. It was a very difficult test. On the other hand, Imperial gave us a maths test for engineering and that was much more friendlier. There was five questions. They kind of aligned with the A-level topics. So it wasn't anything new. You just had to apply your A-level understanding. And as long as you're semi-decent at maths A-level, you should be able to do okay with that. Now, some of my friends that got into Imperial also had to take an English test. I didn't because fortunately my English GCSEs, I got an eight, I got an eight in them. So I had enough English level. But I do believe if you get lower than, I think it is a six or maybe even a seven, you'd have to take a supplementary English exam to make sure that you understand English. Honestly, it is that simple. All of them said that it's a really easy test. As long as you were born in England and can speak English, you should be able to pass that. My secret tip free of the day is physics and maths tutor. This is the place to go for past papers for uni entrance exams. It's got the BMAT, it's got the UCAT, it's got the ENGA. All your entrance exams should be on physicsandmathstutor.com. Honestly, I rinse their past papers differently. It was one of the reasons that helped me get into university in the first place, I really recommend it.
Okay, so provided you pass the examination, you will get onto the interview stage. Now, for most of you, this may actually be your first interview as well, unless you've had jobs before. And the number one thing I would say is be confident. You're there to be yourself. You're there to reflect how much you want to study that course. Don't go in there feeling anxious or nervous, feeling there like it's a way for you to show what you're about and why you want to study that course and present yourself as someone that's excited to be there. To be 100% honest, I wouldn't feel intimidated by these interviews. More often than not, it's an informal conversation. They're not going to be there to grill you for half an hour. They're literally there to understand how you think and whether you are a good fit for the university. More often than not, they're thinking of your thought process rather than whether you actually get the question right. Now, I attended two interviews. I had one for Cambridge University for Engineering and another one for Imperial Engineering. And they were both stark contrast. Cambridge, I had two separate interviews, two separate people interviewing me. The first one had a look at my CV, spoke through of it with me, talked about some things I had on there and why I did them, what was in it for me, uh, what I learned from the process, and then asked me a couple of maths related questions, more often not further math stuff. And then the second lecturer um, at Cambridge, who also interviewed me, talked to me about physics related questions, but both of it was very maths oriented questions. They wanted to see my thought process. They always give you a piece of paper and do not be against writing stuff down. They want to see what you write down. They want to see your thought process. Talk through with them what you're thinking at the time. That's much better because they cannot guess what is in your head as you're writing stuff down. Talk through, say something like, oh, I'm thinking this because of this. I came to this conclusion because of this. Something like that goes a long way for them to understand how you think and whether you are a good fit for the university. Now, Imperial College London, on the other hand, it was kind of like a test center. Now, if any of you lot have watched The Apprentice, the BBC show, it was kind of like that. We were split up into small groups of around six to seven people. And then we had a lecturer in the corner basically taking notes on us while they gave us tasks to do and how we talked to each other. It was very soft skills oriented as well as obviously physics and maths questions for engineering. They want to see how we interact with others in the group, whether we're someone that's quite confident and puts our thoughts forward or someone that sits back a bit more passive. I mean, I nailed it because I got into the university. And the thing I would say is, don't be afraid to speak. Don't be afraid to propose your ideas, but also be an active listener. Don't just sit there and when you give an idea, seem really interested. Then some, when someone else gives an idea, you're sitting back like this, not really caring. Be interested on both sides, giving and receiving thoughts. It goes a long way. They want to see how you interact with other people in university and whether you're someone that can really fit into Imperial College London. After that, we did an experiment. They said this wasn't assessed. It was literally just showing us what engineering is like at Imperial, in specific uh, civil engineering. They showed us an experiment that we never ended up doing, to be honest, when I, got, when I got into the uni, but that was nice either way. And then the final thing was when they split us up into even smaller groups. There was four of us for my one. We got it put into a meeting room with one lecturer. I got Mr. Uh, Professor Washington. He was a really nice guy. And he basically just asked us individual questions about why we want to study civil engineering, engineering why imperial this is the part where everyone begs it they all talk about oh i want to study engineering because i want to help people that uh weren't helped before uh, my country's in ruins because of this structure something like that basically but that was the whole process much different to cambridge which was very one-to-one -one and personal imperial felt a lot more collaborative and everyone was involved and it was almost how do you integrate into their system rather than cambridge which was are you right for the university like are you the right person uh, in terms of your individual skills, Imperial is very much, are you part of the team? Another secret tip of the day is research the uni. A little bit of research goes a long way. If you can drop that in, uh, so a project that the university has done around your subject, that can really show that you're infused not only about the subject, but about the university as well. They'll be really excited to see that because not a lot of people do that. They know their personal statement off by heart. They know the subject off by heart. But dropping in something like, oh, I know Imperial were at the forefront of this, or I know Cambridge was at the forefront of this, can go a really long way into them understanding, look, this person's done a lot, little bit of extra research, wasn't asked of them to do, that shows they really care about this degree and about this university, are more likely to consider their application in a higher regard. Well, more often than not, after the interview process, you are finished with your application to university. Well done. Take some time off to relax. It has been a tough process, a stressful process as well for most people. But one thing I would say is don't fear rejection. 
everyone will get rejected at some point in their life. I mean, J.K. Rowling, the author of the best-selling book franchise, probably of all time, Harry Potter, got rejected by 12 publishers before one accepted her to publish Harry Potter. So it just shows you may be a great student, but not a great student for that university. And just because they didn't accept you, that doesn't mean that you're bad or you're a horrible student or you shouldn't ever get into university. It's just you weren't right for that particular university. Keep trying, it's a part of life. Everyone gets rejected at some point and it may well happen on your route to university. For those of you that have made it to the end of this video, I want to say thank you. I hope you found use in the tips I provided and I hope it helps you get into the university that you wish to go to. As always, if you're looking for more student advice, this is the place to be, so make sure you subscribe and I hope to see you guys in the next video.